The Karate Kid 2010 Wedding of Karate Fights Rumble in the Bronx was directed by Stanley Tong and star Jackie Chan as Mayan Kyung, a Hong Kong cop who visiting New York for his uncle Bill, Bill Tung, wedding. At Bill's apartment building Jackie meets his neighbor Danny, Morgan Lam, the young boy in a wheelchair who lives with his neglectful sister. I liked how the two instantly became friends, and Jackie treated Danny like he would any other boy. We also learn that Uncle Bill is the owner of the Waha supermarket, but because of the high rate of crime in the neighborhood, Bill is trying to sell his market. Bill finds a potential buyer in Elaine, Anita Mui. Elaine is interested but is reluctant to buy it for what Bill is asking. Hoping to seal the deal, Bill invites Elaine and to his wedding, where the two come to a tentative agreement. The movie then jumps forward to a few days later when Jackie Chan is helping Elaine out at the market. When two members of a local biker gang attempt to shoplift, they are stopped and beaten by Chan, making him a marked man. On his way home that night Chan witnesses a woman getting abducted. He scares away her would-be kidnappers, but when checks on the woman, she attacks him, revealing the entire thing was a trap set up by gang leader Tony, Mark Eckerstrom. Rumble primary Chan is cornered in an alleyway where the gang severely injures him, and leave him for dead. Since this is his movie, Jackie survives, and he nearly makes it back to his uncle's apartment, but not before passing out in front of Nancy, Francoise Yip, who is, Tony's girlfriend and sister at Danny, Morgan Lam. More importantly, she is the woman who lured him into the trap earlier. Feeling guilty, Nancy tends to Jackie's wounds and makes him comfortable. The next day when Jackie returns to the supermarket he finds it been trapped by the gang. Elaine informs tells him she's thinking about backing out of the deal with Bill now that she knows how often the market is robbed. Later, Tony and his gang come back demanding compensation. Elaine gives in to their demands, but they still rob and vandalize the store. Jackie Chan confronts them outside, and Tony and his gang chase after him. This leads to Chan making a daring escape by jumping from the roof of a parking garage to a fire escape on a building across the street. When you watch this scene, you realize how small his landing spot really was. It's an awesome stunt and remarkable that Jackie made it safely. Rumble in the Bronx 5 So by now, you're probably thinking the big climax of Rumble in the Bronx is going to be Jackie Chan vs. Tony, but you'd be wrong. It is at this point where the main plot of the film kicks in when a member of Tony's gang named Angelo, Garbing Cross, gets involved in an illegal diamond deal gone. With the diamond thieves distracted, Angelo steals the diamonds. Unfortunately for Angelo, a criminal syndicate led by White Tiger, Chris Lord, is after Angelo and the diamonds. For plot reasons, Jackie and Danny witness some of the carnage go down, and the two run into a building for safety. But Angelo is unable to outrun the bad guys, so he stuffs the diamonds in Danny's wheelchair cushion. Jackie is later questioned by the syndicate men, who are posing as FBI agents, looking for the diamonds Angelo took. They give Chan a number to call if he finds anything. Jackie then visits Nancy at a nightclub where she is a dancer, but when members of Tony's gang see them together they chase them down. Jackie and Nancy escape, and he advises her to stay away from Tony. After failing to find Jackie and Nancy, the bikers trap Elaine's supermarket, but two of Tony's men are captured by White Tiger's men, who turn up at the supermarket in search of Angelo. Why the diamond robber decided Angelo would be hiding at a nation market is anyone's guess. Meanwhile, Angelo's gang is blissfully unaware of his diamond heist and one gang member is fed into a tree shredder. After Jackie defeats the gang in another brawl, he berates and insults the gang for their criminal lifestyle and urges them to change. Moments later, one of the gangsters comes back to the hideout, with the dead gangster's remains in a trash bag. The other gang member tells the others this is a warning to return the goods that Angelo stole. Francois Yurt Rumble in the Bronx, minus 1995, BPF 512 with lives at stake, Jackie tells the gang he can help, and he contacts the syndicate, thinking they are the FBI. After they find Angelo, he reveals that he hid the diamonds in Danny's wheelchair. Tony, Angelo, and Nancy are taken hostage while some of White Tiger's thugs go with Jackie to Danny and Nancy's apartment. After the goons find the diamonds, Jackie is able to take them all out. Seeing how easily he dispatched of the goons made me wonder why he waited so long to take them out. When White Tiger calls one of the gangsters, Jackie takes the call which ends with White Tiger arranging an exchange, but he warns Jackie not to contact the police if he wants to see Nancy and the others again. Elsewhere, Nancy and the others are intimidated by White Tiger's men. Tony tells them that Jackie is the owner of the Waha supermarket, and later while Jackie talks with Elaine, the syndicate's men demolish the supermarket. Jackie finally calls the police for help, and use him as bait to get the gangsters. But the syndicate men realize that Jackie is working with the police and a fight breaks out. White Tiger's men hijack a hovercraft and are pursued by Jackie in the New York Police Department down the Hudson River. 
The hovercraft ends up running through the streets, but ends when Jackie steals a large sword from a museum, clamping it onto a sports car window and driving into the hovercraft, shredding the rubber skirt and crashing the vehicle. After shooting one of the syndicate men on fatally to force them to reveal White Tiger's location, Jackie drives the repaired hovercraft to a golf course where White Tiger is playing with subordinates. He runs them over, leaving White Tiger naked on the ground as Jackie and friends cheer Tiger Rumble in the Bronx was a big surprise for me when it hit theaters nearly 25 years ago. I hadn't heard of Jackie Chan before this movie but was impressed by all the stunt work the man did. Okay, so most of the action scenes involve Jackie springing into action whenever a bad guy shows up. But it was cool how he used not just martial arts but also whatever tools and props were at hand. There's a sequence in Rumble where he uses refrigerators and pinball machines, another one where he improvises with furniture and shopping carts. Strangely enough, one of the film's highlights is the end of the film because along with the closing credits they show outtakes of the stunts that went wrong. Rumble in the Bronx has its share of mishaps, like the scene I mentioned earlier where Chan jumps off the top of a building and lands on a fire escape landing across an alley. It turns out he broke his ankle shooting that stunt as good as the stunts were. Rumble in the Bronx won me over because of Jackie Chan's infectious personality. It was easy to like him because he treated others with respect. He only turned to fight when he was pushed or his friends were in trouble. I also liked how he and Danny became fast friends. Jackie didn't treat him any differently and he looked after him as if that he were his own brother. The only negatives I can say about Rumble in the Bronx is that the plot is unnecessarily convoluted. The diamond plotline doesn't kick in for a long time and feels like it comes out far and nowhere. Also, despite what the title of the film tells you, very little of Rumble in the Bronx was actually shot in New York. Most of the filming took place in Canada, and it shows in the film. If you're gonna use Bronx in the title, go shoot some stuff there, at the very least a stunt or two. 18 Rumble in the Bronx is not an Academy Award-worthy film, especially once most of the cast has been badly dubbed. Nor is Rumble 1.